introduction to Xcode that you can follow along with. I'm going to be using Xcode 12. So I've downloaded it from the App Store. I'm just opening it up on my computer. Um, on the right here, you'll see some of my previous projects. I'm going to click on this top one right here where it says Create New Xcode Project. And I'm going to create an iOS app. You have different options up here for Mac, OS, TV, and other. Mine's going to be an iOS app. And instead of making a document app or a game or an augmented reality app, I'm just going to click Regular App over here on the left. When I'm all set, I click Next. I'm going to give it a name. Um, I'm going to select my uh, development team. Um, if you want to create a development team, you can using your um, Apple ID. I have my organization identifier, just com.dalton. Um, you can make anyone you want to. Um, yeah. What this is used for is it's used for creating your bundle identifier, which is this right here, com.dalton.hello-world. So every app that you create is going to have a unique bundle identifier. So you need to make sure you're creating apps with different names um, so they have unique bundle identifiers. Um, if there's two with the same, uh, the same bundle identifier, then that's a problem. The user interface we're going to be using is Storyboard. There's another one, Swift UI. That's just another way to build apps. Today we'll be using Storyboard, um, and our language will be Swift. I don't have core data checked off or include tests. Core data would be a way of saving information on the app. We're not going to do that with this app. We also don't need to include the tests for this one. So when you're all set, you can click Next. I'm not going to create a Git repository on my Mac for this, um, but if you do have a GitHub account and you want to connect it to Xcode, it's quite easy, and you can um, yeah, you can upload projects to the cloud and have other people work on them at the same time using GitHub. Uh, so something to think about for the future. I'm going to create this just on my desktop, but you can save it in the folder, create it anywhere you want to. And when Xcode first opens up, our project first opens up, we can see that the project file is highlighted. Um, over here on the left pane, this is the navigation pane, it will have all the files um, for this Xcode project. And the files we're mostly going to pay attention to today are the viewcontroller.swift file, where you can add code, and the main.storyboard, which is where we can use our, we can lay out our um, project. So here we have the navigation pane, like I said. The next pane over here is the document outline. Um, where it has this view controller scene. Then over here we have our editor pane uh, where we can make changes to our app. And then over on the right we have the inspector pane or the utility pane. Um, and I'll sh sh show you some examples of how to use that uh, in a second. If you're thinking about this, um, this would be the big picture, like the whole universe would be over on the left hand pane and this would be like a little bit smaller. And over on the right-hand pane, it would be like a close-up of what you're working on. So that's one way to think about it. You'll notice uh, down at the bottom, we're viewing as an iPhone 11. Um, one thing I like to do is I like to match my simulator, um, which is right up top here. I like to match my simulator, iPhone 11, um, to the screen that I'm using when I'm creating my app. So I just went up here and I changed this to iPhone 11. Um, so that it matches uh, my view controller. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the object library. The object library is this plus sign in the upper right hand corner. If you hover over it, it'll say library. And I'm going to drag on a label and a button. And you'll notice once we have like the label or the button highlighted that the identity inspector changes a little bit. So this will be like the attributes you can adjust on the label. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name. So that it says hello world. And if we want to, we can make that a little bit bigger by going under the font and hitting the up arrow. Just going to center that in the middle. And yeah, 
so if we highlighted the button, then the attributes inspector would change a little bit. This is the attributes inspector right up here, this tab uh, with these lines and sliders here. And if you hover over it, it will say attributes inspector, show the attributes inspector. You also have the identity inspector and the size inspector. Um, all right, so what we've done is we've put on a label and a button. We've changed the name of the label to hello world. And we're just gonna press play so that we can see what our app looks like. This play button in the upper left hand corner will launch the simulator and we've changed the simulator to be iPhone 11 so the screen should look similar. And when it's all loaded we can see our hello world and our button. But when you press our button nothing happens so maybe we should work on that next. Um, when I'm closing the simulator I hit this stop button up here in the left hand corner um, and that will stop the simulator from running. All right, so next up, we're going to connect this label and this button um, to our viewcontroller.swift file. In order to do that, we're going to have to open up another, another editor pane. So this button right here, this small plus sign, says Add Editor on Right. I'm just going to click on that. Once I open up the new editor, I'm going to click on the viewcontroller.swift file. Um, so I should have my viewcontroller.swift file open in the right and my um, main.storyboard file opened on the left. Now you can see uh, that we're getting less and less room to work with. So one thing I like to do is I like to toggle some of these panes. So I might close my um, utility pane on the right. I might close my navigation pane on the left. And that is done with these buttons in the upper right and left hand corner. And this will just give us a little bit more room to work with. So the first thing we're going to connect is we're going to connect um, the label and we're going to connect that above view did load. Uh, this line of code right here uh, is the view did load function. Anything within these curly brackets here will run when the view is loaded. It, they give you a little comment here. You can make a comment with these two forward slashes. Do any additional setup after loading the view and that would come here in view did load. So I'm going to connect my label above view did load and my button below view did load. It's just good programming practices to put your outlets above view did load and your actions below view did load. So to connect, I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard. I'm going to click on the label and I'm just going to drag it to somewhere above view did load, any of these lines, and then I let go. And I'm going to give it a name. It's going to be hello world label. It's going to be a UI label connection is weak, and I just say connect. And then you'll see that appears right above view did load. That label is connected. So now I can refer to it by its name, the hello world label, and I can change things about it. You can see there's a circle, and that circle's filled in with that dot. And when I hover over it, um, then the label is highlighted. So you can see that this is connected. Next up, I'm going to connect the button. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to click on the button and I'm going to drag it somewhere below view did load because it's an action. And when I let go, it lets me fill in the name. This will be the will be the hello world button but you can give it really any name that you want. I'm going to change it from type any to UI button. Um, touch up inside is what I want. That's just a regular button touch um, and I'm going to connect that. And again that appears over here below view did load and if I hover over um, this bullseye then that button does highlight so I can see that it is connected. Um, so I think when I hit the button, I'm just going to make it say something else. So I go inside of the curly brackets for the button. Um, so anything we put in here will happen when the button is pressed. And I want some information to appear in the Hello World label. So I always start with where I want the information to appear, and that's going to be the Hello World label. One thing that's nice is it'll autofill for you. You can just hit Enter to... Uh, to complete that autofill. Um, 
Next up, I'm going to put a period. What that does is it allows me to change one of the attributes in the Hello World label. Well, what do I want to change in the Hello World label? I want to change the text. So I'm just going to type in text here. Again, it'll autofill for us. I'm going to do space equals space. Um, and then we can make the label say something. And I'm just going to make it say my name. Um, so when this button is pressed, the hello world label.txt will change to be Dalton. Now I'm going to run this project one more time by hitting the play button up here in the left. Um, the label appears, the button appears. When I press the button, the text changes to Dalton. So my app works. I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial, I hope you learned a little bit about Xcode um, in Xcode 12 and how it's laid out and how it works. Um, thanks a lot for watching.